of what our schedule was like last week and thought the guys uh, um, continued to show that they want to bring, bring it every practice and improve and today was a good induct introductory uh, day for Penn State. So I'm excited about uh, you know, the challenge. It's obviously a great one for our team as well as our offense and um, I know the guys are excited about it as well. Any questions? So uh, Coach Allen has talked about in the past the ambiguity for the opponent not knowing which quarterback you guys were going to throw at him. Obviously, Penn State knows it's going to be Peyton Ramsey right. now. Right. So uh, how do you feel like Peyton will handle that challenge, and do you do anything yourself to try to make him less predictable or you know different than what they've seen on film previously? Yeah, no, I think I think um, you know we're to the point in the season where um, you know they've seen enough on Peyton to kind of know. And uh, you know, every week we always bring different wrinkles to the table, uh, no matter who the quarterback's going to be, and and uh, that's just part of our game planning. Um, and so we'll continue to do that. But uh, yeah, there certainly won't be a question on who the who's going to be playing. Um, and you know, I think that that's a positive for us too. You know, when you put yourself in Peyton's shoes and him knowing, you know, and preparing, and he's had that a couple times, but for the most part, he's had to just be ready, you know, in case. And so. Um, I know he's going to do everything. He knows how to prepare. He's been in these positions before, and and uh, you know he's prepared in a great way and and be ready to go um, and have our offense ready to go on Saturday. At every school that 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 you've coached at, the offense in the first year has had a pretty significant jump in the total offense, and obviously that's been the case here as as well. How have you been able to execute that now that we're most way through this season? Yeah, I, I think. Um, you know, I just, it just it takes a little bit. I think every every year, but I just try to get a feel of what our guys are capable of doing, what their strengths are, and uh, you know, you install your concepts in spring ball and and uh, in fall camp, um, and you try to get them to understand. But you know, a lot of it's just uh, them being confident in what we're doing, and you're going to see that the players make plays, and there's there's um, there's there's not a magic formula, but there's there's just things that we do that our guys believe in. And um, they also, I think, understand the adjustments and the answers that we have within our system um, that we can go to, whether it's throughout the course of the game or from week to week, um, depending on the team we're playing and what their style, um, what their defense uh, you know, presents. Um, but um, I think it's just, you know, we work on fundamental things, uh, taking care of the football and and uh, you know, placement of the ball. Uh, you know, when we're throwing it to where there can be yards after catch, and and understanding the landmarks we're trying to get to, and just the confidence. Uh, you know, the details that we're preaching each and every day, and and that goes that that falls on the staff too. Uh, this the staff has been awesome uh, with those details, and and you know, I, I I go to bed at night knowing that you know the things we talked about we'll we'll talk about today um, are going to be coached up extremely well tomorrow in those meetings with our players and uh, because of the confidence or because of the success we've had you know those com those the players are just looking for you know they want to be coached um, and uh, you know they just um, have responded and made plays and in, in big moments and um, just continue to build on that that confidence and success we've had coach a big part of Peyton's game is to be able to take off and run down again and uh, but you know he's had some some pretty massive wallops to him this year too. Uh, you know now that Mike's out and he's the guy you need to rely on trial it for 60 minutes. I mean, does that affect uh, like how often you'd want him running or anything like that at all? Yeah, I, I think it's in the back of your mind. But um, you know some of the hits are when he's stationary back there in the pocket. You know, uh, throwing the football. And uh, I know that there's been a couple. I think of the Maryland run he had um, where he took off and scrambled. You know, and so you know, thinking about some of the biggest hits he's had have been, you know, in the past game where he's had to make something happen or or standing in there in the pocket. So, um, you know, he, that's his style of play, and uh, you know, it's it's who we are. We you obviously got to be careful. Um, I think uh, any time where I've been, we, we've tried to keep the quarterback carries minimal, unless if that's truly the style of quarterback that that person is, uh, which I've had once or twice throughout the years. Um, but you know, you get seven to eight carries a game. A couple are on scrambles, uh, a couple of zone reads or power reads, and you know, you want your skill, the rest of the skill players being the guys that handle the ball. So, not much changes there, but certainly we do have to be conscious of that. You know, um, 
uh, limited in the number of, of hits he takes, for sure. How much did the, the personnel that Indiana had already or the potential of those guys have to do with you taking on the OC opportunity that was given to you here? I mean, just looking at the, um, the roster, did that have a lot to do with it? Um, yeah, I, I think I think number one is um, I came into a place where I trusted the coaches and started with Coach Allen. You know, believing in the people and just really, you know, as you talk to them, um, hearing you know how close we are, and then turning on the film and seeing, okay, you know, these guys can make some plays. There's some plays that are being made, and and you know we're young, but. Um, um, you know, we continue to stay the course like we are right now. Um, you know, there's the there's potential to do some big things. And so um, you, you vet all that out, you know, when you're going through the process. Uh, but I think a lot of it just, to me, was a, making sure that I was around good people. And I'm around Coach Allen. I'm around a coaching staff that just has a ton of energy, um, guys that enjoy being around each other, enjoy coming to work to each, each day. And when that happens, uh, you put everything into your job and you enjoy being there. Um, great things happen because it filters on down to the players. They see the camaraderie, the chemistry amongst the staff, and now they, they share it and have it as well. Uh, Jack Tuttle, how did he handle the increased reps in practice and your comfort level with him now as he kind of elevates to the backup role with Mike? Yeah, Dean? yeah, no, he definitely has gotten, you know, he gets very few throughout the course of a week um, as far as with the whole team, with the whole offense. Um, I thought last week was really a good week for him. I think he really settled in more than anything and, um, you know, understands where he's at now and, and uh, that he needs to be, you know, the guy that's ready to go. Um, but uh, I thought last week was a very successful practice for, set of practices for him, and I thought today, again, um, just very consistent. And that's what you want out of any player is just the consistency and, um, you know, the growth uh, being – um, being continued to be there, and I, I think he's got a, a you know a kind of peace about him right now in his mind. Um, you know, compared to where he was at earlier when it was competing for a job and, and all those type of things. I think there's a there's an understanding, better understanding of the offense because he puts just as much into it as Michael did and as Peyton does, and and um, you know he's ready. He's been ready to go throughout all of this as well. Penn State's got one of the better numbers in terms of sacks and tackles for loss in the league. Obviously, you guys don't have a lot of those, especially sacks. I think you're least in sack yards allowed in the Big yep. Ten. You talked about individual coaches' contributions, but as a play caller, as you think about things, not just through the week, game planning, but in the rhythm of the game, how do you, like, I guess, what role do you play in keeping protections maybe a little bit mixed and, and confusing mm -hmm. fronts and, and just keeping the pocket cleaner? Yeah, I think a lot of it goes into our weekly preparation and the quarterbacks and us as a staff knowing what we're, what we're trying to accomplish. And, you know, you nailed it. Um, I mean, we're, we're trying to avoid those, those plays that push us backwards, whether it's penalties or tackles for loss or sacks. Um, and when we can play our game and stay ahead of the chains, you know, we're, we're pretty good. We have a lot of plays with, um, that we can go to, you know, when we're, when we're in that moment um, ahead of the chains. But I think most of it goes into the quarterback's understanding through the week, hey, here, here's what we want to get into. And, and I know Coach Hiller and Coach Hart, um, they really focus uh, throughout the course of the week in different situations on our protections and where we're vulnerable, what we need to get out of. And, and um, you know, I can see it as I'm watching the film too, but uh, they verify it, and and uh, you know maybe make sure we game plan around those those bad looks. Um, you know, it does, everything doesn't have to be perfect as far as the look we're going to see. We just want to make sure we stay out of the ones that we're vulnerable in. And so uh, mostly, you know, it's carrying out on Saturdays what the weekly preparation was. You know, uh, within the game plan to stay out of those situations. Um, Stevie's on a little bit of a roll running the ball right now. Uh, just from earlier in the season, the way he was running into the way he's running now, is there a difference in just how he's running and then how he looks when he's running with the Yeah, ball? I think there is. I think there's a, a confidence and a swagger that he's got back. And, you know, he just had to let things come to him. Uh, you know, you look at last year and the success he had, and there was huge ex high expectations. And I think people early were, were certainly thinking, you know, the key to stopping us of, was, was to focus on him. And, um, you know, I also think about we lost some – from last year, some pretty good offensive linemen. And, um, 
you know, as many as there were coming back, there were some key components to the offensive line um, that, that are on playing in the NFL right now. And uh, we've had some guys that step in, have stepped in and done an awesome job, but it just takes time. And, uh, you know, I think in those early games, um, we struggled a little bit and then we played the Ohio State game, but I felt like those weeks of practices, we were still getting better. And uh, then it's kind of finally started to show itself here, you know, as the season's gone along. So another huge challenge this week against Penn State because uh, they do a great job against the run. And, um, you know, I think our guys just have a different confidence and swagger about them, not just, uh, you know, overall, but also in the, in the in, you know, especially in the run game um, and how we've, you know, Northwestern, I thought, had a very good run defense. And we continue to grind it out. And, um, you know, Stevie obviously spearheads a lot of that with, you know, his ability, and I thought the first drive of the game against Northwestern, he really set the tone with some big runs, uh, you know, running through guys and running over guys uh, that gave us a lot of energy.